Hello, welcome to the AMTC 2022 interview series. For this episode, I have been joined by Mikhail Zeus, the Executive Chairman of Ehrlichen. Hi Michael, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and first of all, I'd like to congratulate you on this amazing event. I mean, this I've been coming for the last three times and it just seems to be growing in stature and people are talking about it with more and more respect. And I think that's down to what Ehrlichen have done and the organising team. As the chairman, as the executive chairman of the company, um, where do you see the main value for this event? First and above all, it was about to build a community. So that why the last five years we had, first, we had to build a community which is working around additive. There was nothing. There was worldwide, there was no conference at that, at that time. Uh -huh. And now after five years, as you say, you can really see the fruits coming out because there's more commitment. There's not, there are not some nerds playing around additive. That's, that's real business, real companies, as we have just seen today from Asia, or now with the, with the American sector, with Collins, or with Eaton, or with Boeing. There's a lot of business behind, meanwhile. And now more and more commitment from industry comes in. And, and to, to cover that, you need the cooperation, you need the exchange. And this is what we, what we have achieved, achieved, I think, with this format here. And now we roll it out further on. Now we have signed this morning the cluster. We had companies like Siemens and G together in one group. <laughs> yeah. you, had, you have Audi or, e or EOS from, from the printer manufacturers. G is doing printers, by the way. Same group again. You had, have Ehrlichon as a material science engineering company uh, driving that story. You, you have Audi from automotive side. You have MTU. And this is only, for aerospace, this is only the starter. Because this is an open community, but you have to commit, you have to put money on the table, you have to work together to answer all these, let's say, pre-competitive questions about markets, technology trends, where to go. And this is the next level of commitment. Absolutely. Um, so, can you talk um, a little bit about um, the primary talking points from today as you see it, what you see as the highlights and the main issues? I would say today and even yesterday with the startups, what we have seen in both cases, we have more and more applications. So it's not only about to get better machines, because you can build machines, you can develop materials. In the end, it's about the applications. And typically, if you start a new application, you cannot e immediately talk about, because a lot of industries don't want to share that from the beginning. That's why sometimes the last two, three years, we had to launch things which we can talk now about. And now you see that applications. You see how it happens. There's more and more parts to come being manufacturing and additive. But even the environment around this 3D printing is growing. And this is the takeaway. That's why we had this blue, the, the blueprints, why we had these cases, where a lot of companies are presenting what they're actually doing. So additive is not a vision, it's a reality. What I see is more and more that there is a customer demand on, and they look for solutions. And the classical uh, methodologies are not sufficient anymore to, to, off, to offer that solutions. And now you need a different approach. And with, in addition, with a more digitalized, digitalized world, you can, we can offer such kind of solutions, which you couldn't in the past, because sometimes you couldn't even model, model the requirements because of big data utilization, of artificial intelligence. What we had yesterday at the startup event from our digital hub, is we, na we name it early eye. Early yes, early, an early, an early yes, eye, right, yeah. you really each layer gets, gets scanned, photographed in real time, and you can see if there are defects, you can even in the process, optimize the process. So these are things you couldn't do that years ago mm -hmm. because you hadn't the speed of, of, of uh, computing and you couldn't use the artificial, artificial intelligence in that way. So the whole environment is developing around to make it short, new solutions. If you want to cope with a 10 years, 15 years, well-known traditional way of manufacturing, additive is always the second winner. Because this is an, 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 an optimized, and again optimized process world. But they cannot answer a lot of requirements in the functionality of new products. And there you have to use additive. Earlier this year at the World Economic 
Economic Forum. Um, you were able to share your opinions on the current challenges with supply chains and making them more sustainable. Could you talk maybe a little bit, bit about that? Because I know that was quite a, a dominant theme today, wasn't it? What we can say is there's a lot of aspects around AM in, in the way how you can save energy, how you can reduce carbon dioxide by the energy consumption you need, by transportation, uh, by logistics, mm -hmm. by, by uh, to say, waste covering. Mm -hmm. And um, but I would say what's still missing is a, a wider database. So we have the applications, we have certain use cases, but we have a wider database. Why and how AM is so much more sustainable than maybe other methodologies of production? Right. And here we have to work on because what AM has not achieved yet, like maybe other technologies. Why is everybody talking about um, batteries? Because you need it for immobility. Yeah, I picked up so, on that. Yeah, when you said that this morning. Yeah. AM is still more seen as a technology and a technical uh, uh, and a technology path, but AM is not seen yet as something which can solve a lot of requirements we have on this planet. And here we have to build the bigger picture and to show the better, a wider story, not only the technology story, but as well the story, how, how is the impact of AEM on our life? Yes. And, and this we haven't done yet because the industry is, is so young. And that's why we're consistently working on it. What I said in my, in my introduction speech this morning, what was five years actual is still actual. We have to take costs out. We have to drive the processes forward. Machines have improved a lot, but still they could be light years better. Mm -hmm. The interaction between um, application manufacturers like us and engineering companies with the machine builders has deepened and has exchanged to fuse. But this we have to translate now into the next generations of, of new equipment. So because this industry is that young, nothing has changed from the requirements. Mm -hmm. Costs down, more applications to come, uh, more materials to design, and this is what we're working on. But that's, I would say, the necessity of our industry. The sufficient part is to translate all these capabilities into solutions which makes this planet better. Absolutely, I get that. And one of the, one of the themes I did pick up on, um, which you um, highlighted, but then other people have as well, is how no one company can achieve this on its own. We have to work together. So, um, I know you signed the MOU this morning, but could you maybe tell us a little bit about that and your, um, the reason for doing that from your point of view? Because that's clear commitment. People put money on the table on a consistent base year over year. This money will be leveraged by, by the government that put additional money on. And by that, we, we, we have started in an open community where other companies can join, but they have then to put as well money on to do a lot of these research activities on markets, new technologies, which, is, which helps us answering questions all of us have. And to combine forces with a common focus makes it simply easier and faster. Yeah, I mean, that's where I see the importance. So I understand that the money is vital to make it happen. Definitely. But it is about the real sharing of knowledge, not just exactly. the not just the buzzword collaboration, which happens a lot, it's actually working together to achieve and, and this is a trust building as well, over, yes. over time. And there are industries who have achieved a very high level. If you take, for example, jet engine in industry, they cooperate since decades because the challenges they have are too big for a single one. But it's always consortiums who work together to figure out a new jet engine, either on the military sector or in the commercial. In other fields, we have never achieved that. The challenges are huge, but companies are still mistrust, have, have too much mistrust that they're open up really. So in an additive, I think, step by step, we, 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 we're getting to a level where there's more, more, more open um, cooperation and collaboration, doable and feasible. There's still different approaches and different speed, yeah. but people see if, if, some, if a group is working together and achieves things faster, I want to be part of that group. Absolutely. So we have to lead by example. And this is a kind of an education process because we can work on crumbs or we can work on big cakes. 
And I, I like to work on big cakes and not on the crumbs. <laughs> you could say that. That's really good. So, okay, so even if we look at that step-by-step -step approach then, um, let's round up with something positive. So looking ahead to the AMTC next year, what would, what would you like to have seen has changed between now and then? Don't look to next year. Stay a second with this year. Okay. We, have a, we have an institute founded together with TUM, which has a three million annual budget to make research. We have a cluster founded, which, ha which will have somehow three to four million already from a base financing to do pre-competitive research and market studies and all that stuff. Okay. And both, both of that is already re reality, where companies put money together. There's a lot of projects already happening where we go for not only for prototyping or small numbers, where there are projects where you're talking about ten thousands of parts per year. So scaling up. It's scaling up. Yeah. It's accelerating. And so my expectation for next year is that we get more and more of these use cases and more and more of best practice sharing how this industry becomes more and more industry. Because as I mentioned five years ago, a lot of the equipment we worked five years ago was more Home Depot quality than uh, industrial standard. Because this industry is, again, and I have to repeat and repeat that, that brand new and that young, especially on the metal applications. So year per year, we will accelerate and we'll learn. And the important part is that nobody starts slowing down, nobody stepping out, getting tired, because it's a long distance run. Yes. It's not a short Marathon. sprint. And you have two choices. Either you see that as an R&D project, developing market and industry, and you'll be part of that, or you have to pay maybe 10, 15 years down the road, billions to get part of that industry. And I prefer the first part of the choice. Absolutely. To, to pave the way and, and, and file the industry and form the industry, and not to buy later on with huge amount of money to buy yourself into the industry. Wonderful. And I think on that note, we have to wrap up, but thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Rafael.